have a dress code. The teachers have a dress code. Why shouldn't the parents have a dress mm -hmm. code? He, she says, admittedly, a lot of parents was coming up in there in the bonnets, the rollers, mm -hmm. dude sagging with the white beaters, um, with lingerie, the... Um, the, the what do you call it? The leggings, the mm -hmm. see-through leggings, the half tops, just stuff you shouldn't be going to your child school in. And so she was like, "Enough!" And so a lot of parents got mad and said, "Well, you know, we don't, it, we can't afford Gucci like she's affording Gucci, and we can't." <laughs> and then, then they had this white dude advocating. He's some teacher union rep or something, mm -hmm. and he was basically saying, "Shame on the principal because." That's classist and elitism in that those women, the moms probably don't have the resources she has to get their hair done all the time but, and, and, but that and buy the saying. clothes. Mm -hmm. And therefore, she shouldn't be imposing these things. And I was like, you know, that's bull caca because <laughs> the principal didn't say they need to go to Nordstrom's and right. find the most expensive sock to put on their feet. Mm -hmm. She says, just come decently. Now, you also have now, other what's people. decent? Right. Well, and that's the other thing. And that's what I'm saying. So people are like, well, what if I had to run out of the house real quick? Great. Run out of the house. But before you do, put on a T-shirt, a bra, and some panties, and some presentable pants, and then and, and take off the bottom, whatever you got, and, mm -hmm. and go. Right. You know, like, um, because me and Al are talking about it, and he agrees with the principal, but... You know, I asked him, I said, well, then what would happen if you had an emergency? Mm -hmm. And he says, well, I'll give you a perfect example. My daughter got sick and we needed to rush her to the emergency room or whatever. He said, I had on my T-shirt and my shorts. You know, he could have gone up there. He said, but no, I took less than two minutes to go put on some jeans, some socks and a presentable shirt and mm -hmm. we went. Right. So he was agreeing in that it doesn't take long to get decent. So the point that I'm making is it's just a lot of excuses that people are making not to be decent. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Has there ever been a time that your mama rolled up to your school in a negligee or a night shirt in her bonnet and rollers and house shoes? Well, absolutely not. And why that is is because our parents were old school of the you know old generation where that was totally unacceptable and you had to present yes. yourself a certain way. And if that did happen, that was an anomaly. Yes. And what happened when you saw such and such mama coming up to the school and you say, hey, that's your mama. And they're like, that ain't my mama. And yeah. they run like, that right. ain't my mama. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, because if your mama coming to the school, she's coming to handle some business. Right. Or, but I'm saying that it's not that it never happened, but it was yeah. rare that it yeah. happened. Women, <laughs> and this is the part, part problem that I'm having. Like back then, women understood the importance of being decent and in order because you as a woman are a representation of your children and your household. And if you got a man, you're a representation of him too. And yes, so, thank you. Like you're going to the school. This is your first. This is the school's first impression of you. Mm -hmm. Now, who's at the school? You have administration. Yep. You have the teachers. You have the principal. These people are going to be very instrumental in your child's wait, wait, academic wait, life. Wait, wait, And if you're, you know, lucky, you went to like a, a mixed school. You got the white kids. And that... who cares about the white people? No, no, no. You that's not not to say it like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. But you have the white kids there that are going to go back to their parents and and say a mis and, misnomer. And, and, but this is the thing that I, this is why I say who cares about the mm -hmm. white people? Not to be disrespectful yeah. to mm -hmm. white people because. I want us to stop using that argument. No, no shame mm -hmm. to you, but we need to stop doing that because we, like, I've heard that argument a lot. Well, white people, this is why white people think. Who cares? We need to start thinking about what we think of us because no matter what true, we wear, true. we can wear a three-piece suit in the ball. Right. Now, white people are still going to have negative mm -hmm. um, um, images true. or a, 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 a whatever about us. Mm -hmm. and so we need to care for ourselves. Right. But there used to be a time when black women set the standard. And speaking of white people, they used to hire white black women to take, yeah, to take care of their children mm -hmm. and all of that, you know. So we used to set the standard and now people are mad at Miss Brown because she said that the parent is the first teacher. And so if they see you come up to the school dressed in a negligee, rollers, bonnet, house shoes, what are you teaching them? Mm -hmm. And so you're supposed to teaching be setting an fail. example. You're teaching right. them to fail. But since you're not doing that yet in your house, I'll tell you what. When they come to my school, 
And when you come to my school, you will not come in here dressed that way. Right. And you got to think about this, too. And, And how many of you guys out there have actually seen this? Your son tells you, oh, dad, I got this interview, whatever the deal is. Or you hear somebody that got an interview. And you think, okay, cool. I know so-and-so. They'll hook you up. How many times have you saw uh, Cleophas come to the interview and he's in jeans and, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know. Right. He, he's not dressed properly because he doesn't know. Right. And I've seen, uh, I've read in comments and stuff where people who are um, in HR, whatever, mm-hmm. at um, jobs have said that they've turned people away from wearing, um, coming up there wearing bonnets and just kind of dressing. Sagging pants. Yeah, and she mm. said their, um, their reasoning to them is why they weren't getting the interview is obviously you're too tired. Right. You're too tired to at least come here and fake it because that's what most people mm. do on a job interview. Right. They put the best foot forward, they're dressed nicely mm. and stuff. But you come into a job interview in a bonnet, we don't want you representing right. our company. You got the you got the sliders on. If yeah, you... yeah, you lazy, you know, whatever the case is. Because when I see a person that's dressed slovingly, I immediately, and I said this to somebody else talking to Al, as a matter of fact, mm. I said it might not be right, but I start to think of a bunch of stereotypes. Mm. You think of somebody who was dressed in a bonnet in a nightshirt and they're off at Winco or whatever grocery store you have, I attach this to it. Gosh, they are a, they must be a lazy person. Mm-hmm. Well, what does the house look like? What does the Absolute, car look like? Thank you. What does the kids look like? Did she wash her ass today? Right. If you guys go back and look at some of our videos, there'll be times where I'm wearing just a sports jacket. And the reason I do that is because the industry standard, they want you to look, you know, that's just the standard look professional. No, I mean, if you, but... No, no, you're but you dressed, know what I mean? You're dressed right. accordingly. accordingly. You ain't right. on here with your... Yeah. Panty, your boxers. <laughs> right. And, right. I got the wife beater. Yeah, Occasionally, you, you know, you'll see me wearing, you know, some stuff like right, this. Right, but, but you, you're dressed accordingly. And that's, I think, people... And I hate to say this because there might be some people on here see this and th- mm-hmm. disagree, but it just to me it's to me it's ignorance. Right, right. It's ignorance to argue well, you know, she walk around and Gucci, mm-hmm. she can afford that. No, there is no cost on being decent. Right. Uh, you, you're a good buddy, Phil from the Phil, from the advice show. He started. He was in the thing. Now you, you won't see a video with Phil without being in, being suited yeah, up. Yeah, unless he's in, out in the field or something. But yeah, yeah, you know. But this is like, we need to stop the bullshit. Excuse my French. We just need to stop it. Like, there's some dude um, in Houston. I can't think of his name. He calls himself the five-star general of con- and a PhD of common sense. Some of you guys, okay. I don't know his name, mm-hmm. but he goes to all of these meetings at the school board in mm-hmm. Houston. And he's oh, yeah, yeah. causing the ruckus yeah. and, and all this other stuff. Al follows him. And so, after uh, Carlotta came up with this dress code and things like mm-hmm. that, uh, you started, Logan, huh? No, go ahead. Oh, she just started. Keep going. <laughs> no, but I just, I just, I was looking at the time. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. why. So he gets on live, and he gets on live with a bonnet on and a yeah, a, I saw that video nightgown yeah, or something. I saw that. But he's poking fun at the dress policy, saying, "Ladies, let's national wear your bonnet day." And I'm like, Negro, <laughs> you are counterproductive. Productive mm-hmm. to black people because if you have a problem with what this lady has done, and of course she's trying to attach other stuff. What does she you know? The principal do this or she did. I don't know what this lady has done. I'm speaking about the the, the dress code. So now you're being counterproductive to what she's trying to do. She's trying to uplift and help black people, but yet he's saying, "Nah, put on your bonnet, ladies. Wear your nightgown. Why are you doing that?" Right. Um. A, a quick question. Would this also go with the standard for prom? Every year, prom time comes up, and there's an incident where a girl has a pasty on her breast, and she's 17 we years old. We need you know, more uh, Carlottas at mm-hmm. those schools. More, right. I like the name Carlotta because mm-hmm. it stands out. But we need more principals like Carlotta at those schools where they would say, no, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. not here. I mean, because to wait, your wait, point. Wait, wait, wait. Your sister does that a lot. What? She just, no, ma'am, you ain't doing that here. No, ma'am. You know, mm-hmm. and my sister's an educator. She's mm-hmm. a teacher, and she says she that she standard. applauds uh, Miss Brown. She mm-hmm. says because not only do the parents come in there dressed that way, they smell like weed. She says they reek of weed, mm-hmm. and you're bringing your child to school, and you smell like weed. Mm-hmm. And so the point that I was making about a first impression, you're going to enroll your child in school, 
And the first, the first impression of the, the, that the administration has, because the secretary, somebody's got to do the paperwork. Mm-hmm. Then eventually, the, maybe the teachers will see you, the principal will see you. First impression is this child's mama don't give no dams. Mm-hmm. She came up to the school dressed like that. And so what if some of these teachers and administration now have a preconceived notion about you and they treat your child mm-hmm. less than because they're like, oh, the mama don't give a shit. Right. Uh, true story. My son acted up in school. I jumped on the red eye flight. Went into Virginia. He's in fifth grade. Mm-hmm. Walked to the classroom. Okay, now I'm dressed now. You know, I'm ready to whip some ass because you know when, when you know me and mom. You know, we're I don't want the, number one. I didn't want the impression that uh, you know my son is just a, you know with a single mom. No, that wasn't the case. He has a father that's involved in his life. Right. So you know you got to think about those things when you're dealing with your children. And so when I came there and they saw me, I was dressed a certain way. I looked professional or at least you know decent enough to where they're like, this guy's a serious person coming you in here. You have to. He looks like a parent coming in here. And I was deadly serious in what I was there to do, instructing the uh, teacher. Right. I mean, it's just, I, to, it, it does make a difference. I, to, but to me, I don't even see why anybody would have this as an argument. Right. Why would you argue against somebody saying, because I'm who I am. I'm in the hood. You know, y'all don't understand. See, because y'all don't live here. But you're t- sending your school, your kids outside of the hood to a school. I'm going to find this lyric. And keep talking. I'm going to find you know? this lyric. So, um, so you, know, we, we, you know, a lot of us don't think about that. But, it, but you know, you, we've got children having children raising that don't know any better. And, right. And it's really sad because, like I said, I have a high school right down the street from me, and I see the way some of these kids dress to go to high school. Right. You know, and it's it's really sad, especially the girls. You know, if you're a 14-year-old freshman going to high school, why are you, you got this helmet head on your head, and you got the nail, you're going to school to learn. This ain't a fashion show. Can I read y'all something? Yes, you may. From the... Ever so wonderful, Mr. Stevie Wonder. Stevie okay? Wonder. Remember the, the lyrics in Living for the City? Yes. Go ahead. Go okay. ahead. Listen to these lyrics, okay? His sister's black, like, so she mm-hmm. is black, but never, I mean, but she is sure, he says she is sure not pretty. Mm-hmm. I thought he said she sure enough is pretty, mm-hmm. but it says yeah. sure not pretty. Her skirt is short. Lord, her legs are sturdy. To walk to school, she's got to get get up early. Her clothes are old, but never are they dirty. dirty. Mm-hmm. Living just enough for the city. And so when I think of that, I'm thinking, okay, she doesn't have a lot of clothes. Maybe she just has the one or two dresses, but she does what she needs to do to be presentable. Now, I remember, because um, like I watch, as you do, watch a lot of black and white movies yes. and stuff TCM. like that. And mm-hmm. they had, if, if you watch them enough, a lot of times the women wore the same dress. Like if you watch I watch yep. I Love Lucy, mm-hmm. she had, you, you see outfit. episodes mm-hmm. with her wearing the same clothes and stuff. But back then, people didn't put as much importance on Oh, the the uh, the quantity of clothes. It mm-hmm. was the quality of quality clothes. Quality of clothes. I could go buy a couple of new dresses and keep them clean. And so the point that I'm making is a lot of people make the argument, oh, well, the money, money is at work here. Stop the bullshit, okay? Because mm-hmm. first of all, most people who live in the hood, they're going to probably get some sort of an income tax return. Mm-hmm. And what do we do? We run out and get the, the, the sharpest the clothes. 60, 55 inch TV, you gotta have that. And the kids is all dressed sharp as a tag. But and when go it get, com- get the good weed. Mm-hmm. Oh, and and, and uh, the Jordans. But mm-hmm. when it comes down to the principal saying to you, I need your mom and daddy to come mm-hmm. to school dressed. Oh, all of a sudden, you ain't got no clothes. No, right. you're just being lazy. And you. I don't know what was worse. Somebody's mentally lazy or somebody's yeah. physically lazy. Right. I don't know if you remember this. My papa was a great old man. He's out there doing the best that he can. Remember that song? Uh, the, um, the Clampets. What, what? Patches. I'm counting on your son. Maybe it's how you sing it. Yeah, maybe it's how I'm singing. <laughs> but anyway, the song Patches. That That's what that song was about. They were so poor, but... They put patches on their clothes. But, you know, it didn't... I mean, have you ever heard your mom or your dad talk about when they were coming up? They yes. only had a few dresses, yes. but they were clean. And it was hand down. Yeah, right. and they tell you how they went about mm-hmm. cleaning it. Yeah, I mean, the children yes. were shiny because yeah. it was Vaseline on yep. the lotion. Mm-hmm. I mean, we Castor just had our stuff so. together. But now it's not even a conversation for the kids. It's, eh, who would have thunk? Now, we need to be having a conversation that the parents need. Come on, guys. Well, we go to Walmart, Winco. Yeah. It's a grocery store mm-hmm. out here. Winco, even like in public, 
um, the DMVs, whatever, and people are just rolling pajamas out of bed. in pajamas. Now, true indeed, and, and the boys are doing it now. I, why? And that's not because just something not that's there. specific to black people, no. but we do yeah. it a lot. Right. Like this hair bonnet thing. I wear a hair bonnet. I used to wear a hair bonnet when I had a curl, but when I left the house, I took the you hair took bonnet off. You took that shower cap off, huh? Yeah. You yeah, know. but I have a hair bonnet, but you never see my hair bonnet. No, the neighbors will never know. The grocery store, then nobody see will it. ever see it. He yeah. probably won't ever see it. <laughs> yeah. Which he says, I don't care if you wear a bonnet. I was like, dude. I want you to see me looking like my ass. You know? <laughs> I got rid of. I'm just, uh, I'm just saying. But I, I, if you would have asked me five years ago yeah. about a bonnet, I would ha 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 ha. Mm-hmm. Who would have ever be wearing a bonnet? We see that now. Of course, back in the day, we did kind of maybe see our moms and aunties. Whatever. But no, no, no. But I'm talking about wearing rollers, right? But, but, but still, I yeah. But it was very rare, or they were in the front yard. Right. You know, it was you know, if they went to the store real quick, it was something real quick and they came back. I remember when I was in Houston a couple of years back, I was at some medical convention seminar or something, and there was a lady in line and she had yellow rollers. Mm-hmm. It was Saturday, I'm thinking. Yeah, it wasn't normal. It was something that was normal. But I to me I still thought it was odd. Like here we mm-hmm. are and you're still wearing rollers out mm-hmm. the house. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, five years, yeah, go. Yeah, so it's that's kinda of unusual. But but you know, uh again, when we try to say, hey, you know, there's a, a a madness to it, but it makes sense. If you don't, you got to uh, dress a uh, million dollars to to lift your self esteem. But if you're dressing like shit and you're poor, it, it keeps your self esteem here. And I'll get, be quite honest with you guys. I don't own none of my clothing. Costs more than. Maybe twenty dollars a piece mm-hmm. right. per article, and, and on average, depending on where I go, like I think I pay three bucks for this. Mm-hmm. You know, so the point that I'm making is, you don't have to spend a lot of money. It's, it's just it's just an excuse to not do better. Right, right. But I, but but it all goes back to. It's just like when you get those new Jordans when you get them. How do you feel when you get the new Jordans? You feel like a million dollars. Right. Right. So. If you dress up a certain way or you go to that job interview, you know, you might not get the job this time, but. Listen, in life, life is a giant interview. It is. Whether you know it or not. How many times, because I can think of times where I haven't looked my best, even mm-hmm. though I wasn't out in pajamas mm-hmm. and I've run into somebody. Like, yeah. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Damn, that's my high school sweetheart. Yeah, yeah, like, oh, yeah. God. Now here I am, hair sticking up a little bit. Mm, mm. You know, I didn't, you know, do a whole lot to my appearance right. because maybe I was running out. So mm. you never know who's <laughs> watching you, where you're gonna mm-hmm. be. Um, you just never know because I have people come up to me all the time who recognize me from the show and say, mm-hmm. "Hey," yeah. and I'll be thinking, "Thank God yeah. I look mm-hmm. okay today." Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but, 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 I, but I think it really does have a lot to do with self esteem because you know when we were growing up. And you didn't like, you know, if you knew the guy was patches, you kind of make fun of the guy that had patches. Right. But notice that guy that had I patches. I never did. No, no, but, yeah. but, but you know what I mean? The guy that right. had patches, he went on to become a lawyer. Because that's not where his focus was. Exactly. His focus wasn't on being the sharpest dude mm-hmm. in school. I got the new Fendi bag. You know, yeah. or trying to get best dressed for mm-hmm. senior, yeah. you know, yeah. all that kind of stuff. So, I, I'm just saying. Applaud, um, applaud Miss Collette Carlotta. Yeah, absolutely. Get big ups. And I think people should get some behind her. In fact, she was going to have a meeting today, I think it was. And she said at the um, request of her sister, uh, and the counsel of her sister, her sister says, I don't think you should have a meeting right, with you your don't, parents. You don't have to explain yourself. I said what, what I, I said. Because, mm-hmm. you know, she has a meeting, of course, homeboy, the five-star general, mm-hmm. uh, and in his, I'm sure he and his antics, they were going to all show up in shower caps and try to hijack the meeting. Well, you tripping and you just didn't you that. Even in wild. We got to be who we are. All that. What? So I'm glad she canceled the meeting because one thing, I'm not going to entertain that. Yeah. I said what I said. These then you the got rules. parents talking about, well, I'm going to take my st- kid to a different school. Take him. I hope you go to another school where they have some more car mm-hmm. be like, no, ma'am. Yeah, because you're definitely not going into the... Uh White school. Yeah, I mean... If you're not going to adhere to their rules. Right. And, you know, I hear people say that argument, too. Well, you know, um, like, I want to take my take my kid to a better school. You hear us say that a mm-hmm. lot. And I'm like, well, what's a better school? Yeah, what's a better school? If anything... You couldn't do none of that the, at these so-called better schools. But, but then at the better school, you're so miseducated 
That's why we got these Carla, uh, what's her name, Angela Rise and stuff running around here. They're just so well, screwed yeah, up. Well, yeah, and the, other, the, the better schools, a.k.a. the white schools, will mm. not teach you who you are. Exactly. That's why Angela Rise was doing you what she You will always did. be fighting for your identity, mm-hmm. and if you don't know who you are, they will tell you who you mm-hmm. are. You'll spend four years, say you're in high school, you'll spend four years of them telling you who you are. You'll get out and be that kid, always seeking white validation, mm-hmm. not knowing who you are, become like a... Uh, Candace <laughs> Owens or, yeah, Candace, uh, <laughs> you know, that sheriff, whatever right. his name is, you know, mm-hmm. people who have these identity crises and stuff. Uh, your so, girl, Amarosa, you know. Yeah, you'll be people like that. So, I mean, to improve, low self-esteem, it breaks your self-esteem Improve the situation where you are. Don't get mad and tell me I'm going taking my kids to another school because I got to put some panties on mm-hmm. under my dress. Yeah, you know, it, that's what I'm saying, stupid. And then, <laughs> and, 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 and then, and then, you're, and then you're leaving... And it, it, it hurts the neighborhood and the gentrification. You're just helping them get you up out of there. Right. So. Right. Hey, you guys, don't don't, don't forget to tune in to uh, Demetri K. Show on Facebook, 3 p.m. Facebook Live, uh, Sunday, specific, Pacific Standard, specific, Pacific Standard Time. She's talking the real. Um, check out her YouTube channel as well. That's the Demetri K. YouTube channel. You see all the shows there, all the stuff that's going down. She doesn't really know what she's talking about until it. it, it she gets an epiphany on that Saturday, right? And then she it says, "Let's talk be about that this." Sunday. Okay. <laughs> it could be that Sunday, depending on what's going on in the right. news. But at the end of the day, you guys don't believe the hype. I mean, stand up for what's right. Stop falling for the foolishness, and let's uh, move forward rather than moving backwards or staying right where we're at. It just right. doesn't make any and sense. And put some damn clothes on yes. when you're going to your kid's school. Yeah, take the bonnet off, sisters. I'm Call sorry. Call your hair. You know? And then why you got a bonnet on and, and then, okay, you got a bonnet, then you got a weave. And what is you doing all day to where you're 3 o'clock in the afternoon you're still wearing a bonnet and some night clothes? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then to put your son's... I mean, I saw these young... They had to be at least 8 or 9 years. No, they, they were older than that. 12 and 13 at the Winco... With their mama in pajamas, and she didn't say a word to him. Wouldn't have been me. You know, if, if my mom, you ain't going nowhere with my mom. Look, you ain't, if you ain't looking like a man. And you ain't even be laying around the house too long like that. Get up and Hello. get about something. Hello, you guys. So you guys, to tune in. You know that that's what we got for you guys this week. You guys, be safe out there, and remember, at the end of the day, find your balance. Deuces.